Welcome back. Let's create this sandworm creature from the movie Dune. This will be a three stage process. Firstly, we make the base mesh for sculpting. Second, we define the form of the object. And then third, we add the details on the creature. Before we begin, however, we'll open a free software called Materializer to make a sculpting brush for sculpting. Here, we'll import the diffuse texture which I'll link down below. And from this we'll generate a height map which will be our sculpt brush. There are default, detail and display settings in our sculpt brush. We'll choose detail and that will generate our height map. We'll then save it to use it as a sculpt brush in our detailing process later down the line. After that is done, we now move to Blender to create the base mesh. We start by adding in a cylinder. We then go into the edit mode and rotate the cylinder in the X axis. We can then start scaling the cylinder in the Y axis as this defines the ultimate basic form of the worm. We can then go on to add about 10 loop cuts in the axial planes. This will ensure that we have some geometry to divide in this plane as well. We shade smooth and then we add a bevel. We'll add two segments and a minimal amount of beveling. We've added this modifier so that the subsurf modifier does not round off those edges. By pressing CTRL 2 we add two subdivision levels in this mesh. We now have enough geometry to add a displace modifier to give it an uneven look. We add a displace modifier and in the texture section we go and add a cloud texture. We tweak the parameters to add in low frequency and low amplitude details in the cloud texture. We tweak the scale just right to make it a simple base mesh to start our sculpting. We now have a good base to start off from so we can apply all the modifiers with visual geometry to mesh. In the edit mode we can bring the center vertex back with the proportion editing tool and this forms the base of the mouth. We can then go into the sculpt mode to start sculpting. In the sculpt mode we'll first correct the overlapping edges of the mesh. We do this by using the smooth brush. You can activate smooth brush by holding down shift and that applies to any sculpt brush that you are in at the moment. On the back side we again take care of these errors and make sure that the mesh is ready for the next stage of the process, which is remeshing. We press R to define the voxel size and with this size we press Ctrl R to apply this remeshing. The mesh is now ready for mid-level detail. We start with the grab brush and by using the brush we make serrations or undulations on the mouth of the worm. For the underside, we press I to activate the inflate brush and inflate these edges a bit. Operating these brushes at low strengths and then successively adding on more strokes gives you more control. After inflating the mouth portion, we inspect the body of the worm to see if there are any other thin areas that we might inflate as well. So we take care of those too. We go over the entire trunk to give it an overall uniform thickness. Making sure that we go over all the sides of the worm. Now. The mouth still looks a bit odd, so we'll take the grab brush and we'll equalize these edges to lie in roughly same axial plane. So bringing some edges forwards and some backwards, we now see that we have a good rough form of the mouth. We then add secondary details by adding these serrations like we did previously, just emphasizing them a bit more. This process can take time but it does provide dividends down the line. So using the inflate brush again, we just quickly go over the mesh and we try and eyeball it to equalize it in all axes. The backside here looks a bit malformed, so we'll use a clay strip brush to add in a little bit of geometry. And then we can smooth this geometry out like we did previously, holding down shift. And this nicely blends in the form with the rest of the mesh. We then use the draw sharp brush to define the form just a bit. So loosely defining the corners and the edges. And then to decrease the sharpness, we can then again use the smooth brush to just smooth it all out. Now for the mouth, we need to give it more cavity. So using the draw brush and inversing it by pressing control, we can move the brush in a circular manner outward to give it a rounded appearance as if this is the stoma or the beginning of the mouth. And then using the same brush and viewing from different angles, we decrease the thickness and increase the cavity just a bit more. This gives us space for adding in teeth further down the line. We can take our time and be meticulous to define the shape of our object. While we do that, it's important to mention that we keep seeing our model from time to time in profile view so that we can see that our sculpting is going in the right direction. 
This looks fine and we can go ahead and do our second remeshing, this time a bit finer. Now we can see that the mouth is a little bit closed off so we can choose the pose brush and bend these edges outwards. This will allow us to give it the characteristic open mouth look of the shy halud, which is the sandworm here. So just like petals of a flower opening, we can have the mouth open in the same fashion. Which also can give you the idea that if you want to make a flower, you can use the same technique to open the petals just a bit. At this point, we can even make the worm dance. Okay, we can go on to create the mid-level details now. These will be the ribs of the worm. They will spread out as rings from the body, and to make them, we can make use of the draw brush. With the strength at 0.3 and from the top view, we go over and create these ring-like structures. Now, from the side view, we can extend these structures. We do this in the same way as we did in the top view. This is just an extension of our initial brush strokes. So, from the other side, we do the same. And we're left with just the underside. So we cover the underside with these troughs as well to complete the ring structures. There we go. Here we have a little more indentation than we actually need, so we cover this up by adding geometry by using the clay strip brush as we did previously. Using clay strip brush and then smoothing it out is a good way to add in geometry in the places of the mesh where you need the geometry to be. Once we've done that, we go to the top view and just nudge the little areas to make the worm symmetrical from both sides. Now the next step is to add in the finer details. For that, we need to have a multi-resolution modifier applied. But for multi-resolution modifier, we need a good quad-based geometry. As we can see here, we don't have a good edge flow and the geometry is a bit of a mess. Let's rename the object to what it is and use quad remesher to remesh the object. We set the face's number to 10,000 and we remesh it. After remeshing, we can see that we have significantly better topology. And this is now suitable for multi-resolution modifier. So let's go ahead and add it onto our mesh. The purpose of this is to give us enough geometry to add in micro detailing to our mesh. We give three subdivision and that should be appropriate for us to add in that micro detail. Remember the brush that we made first thing in the video? The time has come to put it to good use. We duplicate the draw brush. Under the textures menu, we add in a new texture and then go on to the textures tab to add in the height map that we generated. You can see that if we draw now, the texture of the brush is changed. But before we use this, we need to make a few changes that makes the brush more viable. We go back to the brush settings and under stroke, we can change the stroke type from space to anchored. There we go. Now under the mapping section, we also need to change from tiled to area plane. Now if we place the cursor onto our model and drag out our brush, we now have a texture. We change our strength and we start to draw. Using different rotations of the brushes, we can cover the entire mesh with these patterns. From here on, you can choose to skip this part of the video because we'll use the same technique to cover the entire mesh with this pattern. On the underside of the worm, using the same brush, we press Ctrl to invert the brush. This gives it a look that this area has been through the friction of time and is maybe a bit more vulnerable than the rest of the shell. When we're done with the underside, we release the control button and this reverts us back to our original brush. I'll just speed through this as we put the pattern on the rest of the body. Inside the mouth, we can invert the brush again to give it a bit more mucosal look rather than a scaly one. At this point, we're done with sculpting, so let's make the teeth of the creature now. We'll make a cylinder and rotate it to face the same direction as the mesh. Increase the scale to match the size of the mouth opening, and we place it here just to compare. 
Now in the edit mode, we can select the front and back faces and delete those faces now. In essence, we'll be using the hair particle system to make these teeth. This cylinder is the emitter for that hair particle system. We therefore define the bounds of the emitter and we put on a hair particle system. We immediately see a problem that the hair particles are growing from the outside of the cylinder. We need them to grow from the inside. To do that, we simply flip the normals of the emitter mesh. And now we can see that the hair particles are pointing inward. The hair particles are crossing over in the middle, so we decrease the hair length just a bit. We'll also be bending and grooming these hair particles a bit. So in order to have smooth curvature of the hair, we'll increase the segments of hair particles. We also don't want the cylindrical emitter to be seen in renders or in the viewport, so we'll just disable it in both. We now have a hair system ready for grooming. We go into the front view and we can try and place the hair system in the mouth opening. Just eyeballing the position to see what looks right. Now let's start grooming these hair particles to give them some shape. We go to the side view and increase the size of our brush by pressing F and moving the mouse to the right. And now we can click and drag these hair particles in the caudal direction. We'll move the base of the hair particles in the cranial direction. Same for this lower region, we'll give the same symmetrical shape here. We can break out from the side view and see how the hair particles are looking from every direction. And we can nudge these hair particles from different directions. We do this to make sure that the base of the hair is relatively outside and the apex of them is inside. As a last step, we go to the top view and move all the apices all together into the back side. We now have a good looking flow of these hair particles. So the next step would be to apply and convert it into a mesh. We now convert this mesh into a set of curves. Convert to curve and there we go. We convert it to curves because the setting in the curves menu gives us much more control over the shape of these hair particles. In the bevel section, we increase the depth to increase the thickness of these curves. Now we can see that these curves are uniformly thick along the span of the entire length. We need to taper the apices which is the center portion of our curve set. We do this by going into the edit mode and by a circle select method we select the central zone of the vertices. This is done in the x-ray mode so you select all the vertices in the region of interest. Just like so. Now if we move closer to these vertices and we turn on proportional editing and by pressing Alt S we can scale these apices and the effect of it will propagate because of proportional editing. Now we can see that these apices are nicely tapered and this gives us a convincing look of the mouth. If we now enable our sculpted mesh, this is how it looks. To me, this looks fine. Now the last stage is texturing. I know that some of you can do an exponentially better job at texturing this, but here's my little take on how I would texture it. For the teeth, we don't do anything complex at all. We just give it a diffuse texture of some desert-like color. Having references at this point will be a lot helpful. So just matching the saturation and value input of the color to match the reference here. Now we can go on to texture the body of the sandworm. Let's give it a new material and call it Worm Body. With principal shader selected, we press Ctrl Shift T and this brings up our Blender browser. And if you select all the texture maps, they automatically get connected with all the appropriate slots in the principal shader. Since this is not a complex object, we can do auto unwrapping and this takes care of the UVs. And now we have our texture applied here. In order to uniformly scale the texture on the object, we put down a value node and plug the value into the scale. Now the float value that we put here will be applied in all three axes. So let's try and adjust what value we need. We'll give it a value that gives us enough texture resolution for good texture detail. The world lighting is a bit dark here, so we'll go to the world tab and increase the strength of world lighting just a bit. Now back in the object mode, we can see that we don't see much detail on the surface of the worm. One thing we can do is try and crank up the effect of the normal map by giving a double strength, but that doesn't seem to help really a lot. Normally in sculpting, we bake the micro detailing that we did in the third state into a normal map and then use that normal map to drive the surface details. But here we'll cheat a bit by using the pointiness input from the geometry node. We crunch it by using a color ramp and that brings out surface details that we sculpted. We flip the color ramp now to have the scaly areas elevated. 
dislikes her. Now I can use this pointiness data to bring out these micro details in our surface. This will be in the form of darkened scales. We do this by duplicating the principal shader and plugging in the same diffuse map into it as well. The only difference will be that we'll add in a curves adjustment in this part of the shader. We mix these two shaders together and the pointiness input that we generated goes into the factor. We can see what this shader is doing by pressing Ctrl, Shift and left clicking on the node. We play with the roughness value a bit to just have a differentiation between this shader and the previous one. And we bring down the brighter values to give it a darker colour. Now if we output this mix shader into the surface, we can see that we can see some surface detail here. However, we can enhance them a bit more by just adjusting our second shader just a tad. So tweaking the roughness a bit and crunching those bright values just a bit more. Just like so. And now we can see that we can see an enhanced form of the object here now. And there you have it. If you want to play with it a bit more, I can provide you with a file that I worked on and you can have a go through it. A breakdown of the animation that I made using this model is on the channel as well. Like and subscribe if you learned something. I will see you in the next one. Farewell.